here if I can get it to focus on it <laughs> it is looking so good and this mug is so cute it's perfect so I'm gonna tell you guys really quick what my current favorite winter recipe is for an ice latte I know it's winter ice lattes but in all fairness one of my closest friends actually like hardly ever drinks hot coffee like at a coffee shop even if it's in the dead of winter could be a blizzard she'd probably order iced coffee so it's not just me <laughs> i do love hot coffee but in the afternoon it's just it's just fun for me to drink an iced latte even if it's cold outside which i'm not sure how cold it is outside here we are not having snow right now but i know some places are so Anyway, I have my cup here. This one comes with a lid. And my husband actually got this. I had it on my Amazon wish list for a long time. A set of these glasses. And he got it for me for Christmas. So that was really exciting. It's a set of six. And I like that it's more than just one because then if I have friends over for coffee, you know, we can have a bunch of people can I'll link them down below if you guys want to check them out. Um, the recipe that I'm using a lot right now is one shot one pump of hazelnut like the hazelnut flavoring you can get any brand you like I think the brand I have is maybe Tarani or something but the hazelnut gives it like a toasted flavor and then you can put in like white chocolate or caramel or whatever else but basically if you use a, a like one little pump of hazelnut it gives you like a toasted white chocolate flavor and that is what I love in the winter and so that's your tip for <laughs> this week put like two shots of white chocolate and one shot of hazelnut or you could even do maple syrup or whatever and obviously you have to adjust it to your the sweetness you like I actually do like three shots because I like mine sweeter than some people do but um of the white chocolate but it's it's each to his own on the sweetener I like my my drinks really sweet like for ice lattes so or I, I would say they're probably really sweet compared to a lot of people but I know some people that like them just as sweet as I do so I guess it's kind of depends where you come in there anyway let's get started let's get into this video and this would be a good video for you guys to like be you know doing your laundry or washing your dishes or something because I'm not going to be showing you a whole lot mostly just chatting with y'all and I did not put a video up last week so I'm really sorry about that I just December was a really busy month January is ending up to be a really busy month as well and there's I have enough different things going on that sometimes I have to um, sometimes some side hustles or some things that I have going are just a lot more demanding and so that gets put first and then unfortunately YouTube has to like suffer a little bit and I hate that I'm trying to fix that because I love I, I just I hate it like when there's a week that goes by and I miss putting up a video I'm like I feel like I'm not connecting with my YouTube family or whatever so I miss the weeks that I don't post a video I it's not that I'm like forgetting about you guys or anything I I just have two little kids and so it can be a little bit you know I have a family and that I, they come first they come before YouTube and before anything else and they you know they were sick in December my whole like my husband and both of the children were sick and we just we had a lot going on and it was just a busy time so I, I am a little behind I'll be honest um, but hopefully that can change now and I can focus more on YouTube than I have been in the last month. So let's get into it. Enough talking about that. I want to talk to you guys about something that I have been wanting to talk for a long time. 
about this, but I just, I feel like I never have enough time to sit down and just pour my heart out to you guys because with two children now, it's harder for, you know, nap times to line up always and often when it is nap time, then I have to scramble. So I decided today would be a good day. The children are both napping right now. We'll see how long it lasts because they have been napping for a bit now, but I want to talk to you all about this because it is something that if I can help someone else with my story, then I want to do that, you know? And so I am going to talk to you about my carjacking. And this happened the 1st of September of 2022. So September of last year, um, about three months ago, four months ago, whatever that had basically I'll just start at the beginning I had a like a business conference thing come up um, that I was planning to go to my husband and I were both planning to go actually and we had got tickets to go and kind of last minute something came up with work I don't even remember what it was but he decided he was not gonna be able to go so I was gonna go and just take Lakin with me and he had Kinsley at home he was gonna take care of her and then she was gonna, um, my mom was gonna babysit her too, part of the time. But, um, so I was gonna go by myself, but I was gonna be at the conference with, like, other friends and other people that I knew. So it wasn't like I was there alone. I was just going to travel there by myself. And it was in St. Louis, which was several hours away. So I forget how it all went, but I ended up deciding just to go for part of it since I was going alone I decided to just go for the last part and not go like be there the whole time so I was leaving on a Friday afternoon I believe it was Friday afternoon and um, I waited till Larry got home from work he came home from work early and then I was gonna leave and drive over there so when Larry got home he said he doesn't feel the greatest and he was gonna do some work but he said he's not feeling very good and I was like well should I go and he's like yeah it's fine just go and so I left and I went drove over there which was my ride drive over there was pretty uneventful but I did I did stop once or twice to just you know for using the bathroom and feeding the baby and everything um and then I got over there. I had been messaging with my friend back and forth. I was gonna, we were gonna stay like together in the same like suite um, at this motel. And she, we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do that evening because I was gonna get there at like six o'clock. And so we were like, you know, what do we wanna do tonight? Are we gonna go eat out or are we gonna do this or that or whatever? We were trying to decide maybe we know we wanna walk to the arch or do something fun. And we were just messing up there. I pulled up under the, um, in front of the motel like under the archway thing where you unload and um they had a valet there so you know people were getting out of their cars and the valet was parking them and I was gonna I let my car run because I was just grabbing my stuff out my friend was there and her sister and her little boy and I was there with Lake and so I got out I got I went back and got my stuff out of the trunk, started getting stuff out of the trunk, I got my stroller out, and then I got Lakin out, and I had let the car run. I did not lock it, I let it run, but I had the key fob with me, like in my pocket or my wallet or something. So, I had the key fob, and it's like a keyless, like it actually has just like a key fob with a, where you just push the button to um, start the car. So. I had the key fob with me and I was like quickly unloading because she said she would stay with my stuff and then I could go park the car. And she's like, she's going to figure out where I need to park. And so I had just let my car run. Um, I was just, I was in a hurry. I wasn't really thinking, obviously. Um, I was just like, you know, we were going to quickly unload and then I was going to go park. So, um, and I'm really sorry saying this story. I'm probably repeating myself a little bit. I might say too many filler words but I'm just like just thinking over the whole thing kind of makes me like just brings back the like the nervous 
memory part of it um, where I was like kind of scared and and um, I had got everything out of the trunk and I was going around on the passenger side to get my computer bag and my like stuff that I kept in the front seat in the passenger seat like my computer bag and my little I have like a 31 bag with a bunch of like just like my jacket and my my wallet I had gotten out so I had my wallet but it was like my jacket and just you know all the little like some snacks and some just the things that you have handy when you're traveling or when you get there in my computer bag and a ton of just like stuff that I use to edit with or for YouTube or whatever and that was all in the front seat and so I was coming to the front I had everything out and my friend was watching like all my stuff there and like and I had him out praise the Lord um, so I, I had my hand on the front door and I opened it and just like I was opening the door and I my friend said my name and I looked back at her because she was like trying to tell me something and the car just like took off and my hand just like ripped out of the door handle and so I, I, I don't know what happened in the car because I was looking back at that moment and my computer and all that stuff was still in the car so um and I was just like wait what happened to my car like what is happening here and I'm just like my car is taking off by itself like I was just like freaking out because I it was so weird and subconsciously like right away I knew there was like another car had parked right like what had pulled up beside my car like right in the middle there and um, just like when my car took off there was another car right in front of it like pulling off and they were both just like squalling tires and just burning rubber out of there and I like just I don't know why but I just like started running after the car and I was like yelling hey that's my car and I don't know why because I'm like as if a robber would care that this is your car like obviously you know I wasn't even thinking somebody stealing it at that point I was just thinking like somebody took my car like wh what's happening and I was just my mind like wasn't even like catching all of this and like there was so many people like just even standing around there and none of them really like like all of them were the same way I was they were like what just happened you know and I just came I turned around and came running back and I told my friend call the cops um somebody just stole my car and there was like a valet guy that was standing there and he's like what and there was a security guy on like a little golf cart and he didn't see it happen and it's just seemed like nobody really saw what happened like exactly but there was a lift lift or uber driver that was behind the car of the car that someone basically what happened I guess the first car dropped someone off and they just like they hopped out of the passenger seat and hopped straight into my car and just took off with it and it was running and the doors weren't locked so they got right in um fortunately for me they didn't have the key fob and they didn't realize it wasn't in the car somehow they didn't realize the key fob was not in the car when they took it so I was like well I have the key fob but you know I couldn't just shut it off um and yeah they just took off and like my friend didn't have a vehicle you know it wasn't like we could just drive we, we, there was nothing to do and there was nobody nobody else like there to do anything um we were just I was just like what do you do like what do you do now and I literally just like maybe five minutes before that had gotten leaking out and I, I just like I kept going over this whole thing in my head like what if you know what if he would have been in the car what if what if they you know what if I, I don't know there's so many what ifs in a situation like that there's so many what ifs and it's just like I just I didn't know what to do and so my friend was calling the cops and I called my husband like immediately and I just told him like somebody just stole my car um they did not they did not threaten me in any way like it wasn't like they held me at gunpoint or you know even I don't know like what all was like involved they basically just they just stole my car right in front of me and I just felt so like incredibly stupid because I'm like here I was standing right there like how does this happen like I always think of like all of these scenarios that you know somebody's like 
trying to take your child and like what I would like I try to think of so many scenarios and what to do to like keep it from happening and what like what you can do and it was just like well that was a scenario I did I didn't see happening and I just my mind was like blank like what do you do and so she called the police and then I had to give them a whole report and and we just like we were like we had to go inside like so we went inside in the motel and this was like a really big convention so there was like convention people like everywhere and then this one lady started talking to me she's like yeah she saw that car and she saw this this guy was like kept following her around this one guy that was like with that same car and um had been following her and two other ladies around that day and so she like gave me a description of them and um we took all of our stuff and took it up to the room and just like we were on the phone back and forth with the police they didn't show up then at that point because apparently there are not near enough police officers in that town unfortunately um but we were safe like there was nobody nobody was harmed and so we were like we had like that's really all that matters is that nobody was hurt and so we were just really really shook up because like i said all the what ifs and just the fact like i was just like so panicky because i didn't know like okay like what was the reason like was this just a random car you know car theft or was this you know was this what this was and it was just so hard to like try to know how to handle it and all of that and so then I was just with um that evening we just ordered some food out then and um of course I didn't really eat anything because I was too like just tore up and nervous and scared and everything to be honest and yeah I've just been praying and thanking God so much for keeping us safe and my son of course and like there was just like I said so many what ifs and um then I was we were like our whole or not the whole team but some of the team was we were together that evening we just sat together and talked and everything and my husband decided to come or my brother was coming through the town actually the next morning and so he said I should just come home with him because um, we had no idea, like, was the, would we ever get the car back, you know, would, like, the chances of that seemed really low, but, like I said, I had the key fob, and, you know, we kept talking with, um, we do have a, like, a Dodge, um, SUV, so we, um, the way it works with Dodge, like, a lot of vehicles have, like, a, like, a, a tracking system in them somehow, you just, you um, might not always have it set up to like an active subscription, but they like if you activate it, you know, they can track your car. So we did, we did do that. We figured that out. My husband was like calling, like he was taking care of all of that stuff here at home and he was doing all of that. Um, and then the next morning, we still hadn't heard anything back. The police had come to the hotel during the night. Um, also, the security footage, apparently the, um, the motel, they said that whoever runs the security footage, like, that room is locked, and the person that has the key isn't here overnight, they won't be here till tomorrow, maybe, and so it was just, nobody was, like, it was just, it was very, like, it was, like, nothing, like, there was nothing to figure out who, what happened, like, to actually watch the footage, see what happened, who it was, how it was, um, there was a Lyft or an Uber driver, as I had said earlier, behind the vehicle that dropped off the person that hopped into my car. Um, and they had supposedly got the f footage of it happening, but that person wasn't in either. And they had got a hold of them maybe, but it was the whole thing. So nobody had anything for us really in the morning. No, no updates and no... Um, so my brother was coming through there in a couple hours and my husband said just come home with him and it'll be fine like just he'll just pick you up and I was gonna miss a lot of the convention at that point because it was still gonna be till that late that night um 
So I did, I went over with the girls in the morning. I was like, well, I'm going to get as much as I can out of this. I'm going to go over there. And so I went over there till my brother came. And I was in contact with like the police here and there or like the company that was, that we had called and my husband had called to track the car, you know, but they hadn't had any updates for us. And then about, I'm not sure what time it was when we started for, when my brother picked me up and we started coming for home. It was probably around 10 o'clock in the forenoon or 11. And so we came home and then my husband was going to meet us and um, pick me up. And so we were almost to where we were going to meet my husband and the police called me and said they found our car. And it was crazy because we knew, you know, if they discover that it does not have the key fob in it, you know, they might like drive until they can't drive no more or they might just, you know, joyride in it. Um, you know, at this we had no idea what, you know, if they had plans for the car or if they if they, you know, just drove it somewhere, shut it off without realizing. Fortunately, like I said, we had, I had the key fob. So the moment they shut off that car, they couldn't just start it like that simple. Like they would have to like hot wire it if they wanted to restart it or whatever. Like it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't as an easy, like super easy getaway because I had the key fob. So, so. We were almost meeting my husband. I get a call from the cops in St. Louis and they said, we found your car. And she, like she said, we found it. We, it's at a, it's at a gas station and it is like not, it has some damage, but it's like, it looks like it's fine. Like it looks like it's drivable and everything. And she said, unfortunately, like the stuff in the front seat, it was all gone. There was, like, that was all stolen. She said it's kind of, it's a little bit of a mess in there, but it's, like, drivable. So, um, they took it to the, um, they took it to the police station, and she said, you can come get it, like, whenever you want. You can come get it right now if you want. And so we were, like, my husband had driven partway to meet us already, so he said, let's just go right now. And so as soon as I jumped in with him, we had, after we had driven for like two and a half hours or I don't, was it two or three hours? I don't even remember. I, we had to go all the way back out there to pick it up. Um, so we did and we went out there and the, the whole system for like the cruise control up in the mirror, there was like a, there was like adaptive cruise control and, um, any cruise control. None of the crews worked. All of the, like the automatic windshield wipers. All of that stuff, like, they had ripped out, like, the big, like, the computer system out of the, like, up by the mirror. So, I guess, I guess they maybe thought the tracking was in there. I don't know what they thought, but, um, they ripped all that out. And so, and they just, like, trashed out everything in the car. Um, they had hit something with the bumper. So, the bumper was smashed in, in the front, and there was, yeah, there was just different, like, damaged things in the car throughout the car um and of course my computer my very um like my computer that i use for editing for all my youtube stuff and all that my computer bag all of that was gone um which was pretty sad because it was a lot of money's worth and it was a lot of stuff. There was stuff on there there was footage on there that i can i will never have back because i didn't have copies of it unfortunately we had we had been going through like trying to move some stuff around at that point um so i lost footage and i lost just yeah a lot of stuff on that computer and other things that were in the car like with that stuff so that was unfortunate but we did get the car back um we had it did cost some money to fix up the things that were like going on um like there was like all of there's probably all of the like the like the warning things on the dash you know when you have like all of the lights are on like that's how it was all of the lights were on basically in the dash and like i said the cruise control wouldn't work the windshield wipers wouldn't like just a lot of things that were like just kind of like a little bit messed up 
so we did we did end up getting that stuff fixed and so we did get some money into that as well as you know replacing a few of the things that I had to have um, that were stolen out of the car but um, the main thing is that we were all safe and praise the Lord we were safe and we got you know we found our car we we got it back um, I honestly did not I, like that morning I did not think there was any possible way we would even though we had had the key fob and you know like I was like well if they you know if they stole it they probably know of a way to make it work without a key fob um but I guess that is what what happened they went to a filling station and they couldn't start it again after they shut it off and they probably didn't want to be seen messing around there with something like that I don't know so they just let it sit there and um like I said we have so much to be thankful for so we got it back the very next day after it was stolen and my my main warning here I guess is that like expect the unexpected um like I said I hear stories and then I think oh well you know this is what I would do in that situation but we just have to remember that we have like you can never be careful enough um I'm always very like I was always very like if I'm in the car very aware of like keeping it locked and you know all that stuff but I was not um I was not being careful enough that day and it's okay things happen um of course I did blame myself for a very long time but I do know that there's nothing I could have done I mean there yes I could have taken preventative measures and that is what I want to share my story so that other people you know other people can think of these things that these preventative measures we can take but at the end of the day if something happens it's not your fault it is not your fault that there are wicked people in this world and we can do our best to you know stay away from that and you know avoid the situations as much as possible but we can only do so much and God you know God can do anything God can keep us safe no matter what situation we're in and he had his hand there protecting us I know that he did and he was yeah he was just very real to me especially in that time and so I am I don't know what people will do without I don't know what I would have done you know without knowing that God was there protecting us and all of that so I am all I have to say is I am very grateful and we have so much to be thankful for and I just want to say that I appreciate you guys being here and thanks for watching I will see you all on my next video. Bye.